Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Temperatures have been falling, yet the lights have stayed on. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the South African electricity outlook for winter. Hi Terence. Hi Simone. With no load shading over the past two weeks, there are many questions about the reasons. Yes, you know, South Africans have become very jaded, cynical about load shedding. And given that we're in an election year, the conventional wisdom seems that this uh, period of reprieve has, has everything to do with elections and we're going to have a, an intense period after the 29th of May. But it's not clear what the main reasons are because uh, the coal fleet um, has been receiving a lot of attention and there's no doubt that, that some of that uh, high levels of maintenance that we've done during the summer months must be paying off in some way plus the expert advice that has come through from the private sector and the collaboration and the fact that I think uh, the money is there to actually plan properly for maintenance. So that must be having an effect, but it's not yet shown through in the energy availability factor for the last few months. So the energy availability factor is actually has been lower from year to date than it was in the same period last year. So that's why I think people have a lot of questions about how is it possible that we've got this uh, period of stability. But I think in parallel to um, the, 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 the attention that's being paid to the unreliable coal fleet and also the fact that we've got Kusile back, which I think was a, was a major, uh, has been a major benefit, benefit for Eskom. Um, and we've only got now one unit left that's under construction. Uh, there's, I think that that has helped quite a bit. Plus, op open cycle gas turbines have been used very extensively over the last year, and Eskom's admitted that they've exceeded that 30 billion budget for the period. They say marginally. We'll have to see what the figures say. I think those two factors have been important from the Eskom side. But I think maybe a lot of the stability comes from uh, demand that continues to fall on the back of a very weak economy. And the vicious circle in that, in that uh, because of load shedding, that has weakened the economy and therefore lowered demand, as well as, I think, a lot of private uh, intervention at household and business level, where there's been a, a, a large amount of solar, uh, rooftop solar deployed. So we've got a, about f over 5,000 megawatts of rooftop solar now in the system. That's pretty close to what we've done in terms of the whole public procurement. Uh, for renewables on a utility scale over um, more than a decade. So there's a lot of that happening which definitely must have some impact. Uh, so the reduced demand, this, the, soda f uh, the rooftop soda fleet, and uh, I think we've also got some of the, the larger company utility scale uh, uh, projects coming through, but those are also still mostly in construction. So. I think it's really, um, there was an analysis put out by Chris Yellen, but, which I think is quite correct, is that the demand factors, the demand side factors are key to this period of stability. But I think we mustn't discount the fact that there has been a lot of attention paid to the coal fleet over the last number of months, and there has been money available to plan more properly, and procurement relief from the National Treasury that helps them, helps Eskom buy the spares, so that the materials are in place, and then on the skills side, there's been some support from the private sector as well. So I think it's a combination of factors, but it, uh, it, I can see why our brows are massively raised as we enter this uh, the last few count the countdown to the election. Now that we've entered the cooler, higher demand months, what should we expect? Well, Eskom hasn't put out its winter outlook yet, and um, we're already into that season because the, the, the summer season, for Eskom anyway, ends at the end of March. So from April until the start of September, we are officially in Eskom's lower maintenance, higher demand period. So I think the first thing that we'll see is a drop down in planned maintenance. And Eskom has been, you know, its plan for the summer was around 7,000 megawatts average. And it's been below that and above that at times. So we'll have to see what the final average was for the period but they have been doing a lot more maintenance. So that will fall, and I think uh, the indication is that it's going to fall to about 3,000 megawatts, so that gives you 4,000 megawatts of addition. And then the whole issue around winter will be about the performance, as it has been with summer, the performance of the rest of the coal fleet. 
and whether it is able to be reliable over this period. Usually there's a lot of factors that are beneficial to the coal fleet during winter. Actually the lower temperatures help a number of, of the coal-fired power stations, especially those that, that are dry cooled. So uh, th th that's a, a tail on the less maintenance and sort of running them more steadily, that also helps. So uh, if, if they can, and uh, the view is that they can try and get to unplanned, still very high figure, in a, you know, a few years ago this, this would have been an unacceptable figure, but around 14,000 megawatts out for unplanned. Now in the old days, anything about 10 was seen as catastrophic, but I think we're in a more realistic era now. So anything below 14,000 would probably have fairly limited load shedding during the, the period. Anything above that, it gets highly risky. So we haven't seen the official winter outlook but that's the parameters that have been released. So uh, reducing unplanned from 14,500 was the target, the base target for summer. And every time we breached that, you know, we, we ran into trouble. At points, it was in extreme, you know, that stage six type level of load shedding. And if we stay below that, generally, then uh, things are fairly stable. So that, I think, is, is the outlook. And then the other, uh, unknown at this stage is how much um, money Eskimo will be have available during the um, during this current financial year for diesel, which is the thing that fills the gaps often. So those those factors need to be revealed. And what Eskimo will do when they eventually release their winter outlook, they'll give us three scenarios: um, you know, a high breakdown scenario, uh, and a low diesel scenario, and then a scenario which is their base case, which is keeping uh, unplanned outages under control and a fairly, I suppose, uh, level uh, um, usage of the OCGTs and then a best case scenario which we haven't really experienced for a number of years. But I think we have to wait and see what the detail when it's, when it's eventually published. When will we be out of the woods entirely? Yeah, so there's been some chatter this week about uh, certain politicians claiming that this will be the year that we end load shedding entirely. And uh, I think oh, directionally there's a number of positives that we must acknowledge. But, uh, you know, the gap, uh, the supply side gap uh, is still significant. You know, we used to talk about 4,000 to 6,000 megawatts. With the rooftop coming in, it may be that that may have changed, but I think that's still the sort of figure around 6,000 megawatts short for a stable system, and we really haven't seen the public procurement program firing on its all its cylinders. There's a number of um, programs in play, and we'll have to see what the market appetite is for that. Um, there are a lot of uncertainties, particularly around the wind projects and how much wind um, appetite there's going to be, uh, given the uncertainty around grid connections. So we'll have to see how those play out. Definitely on the, there's good news on the battery storage front, that seems to be going ahead quite well. The solar, private solar is, is going very, very well. And then obviously Eskom fixing its fleet. But then there's this whole issue about extending the, the coal fleet and what that's going to cost. Can it be done legally in terms of our emission, our minimum emission standards? It doesn't look like it. Um, although there was a massive uh, 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 concession given to uh, Sassel this week around that, um, but that requires Sassel to actually close down boilers, uh, so it won't be additive and it won't be extending any life. It just uh, changes from a, a load, uh, from a concentration based to a load based measurement. So we'll have to see what the decision is around that, and that decision hasn't been made for Eskom about how it's going to manage it. It's uh, legally manage its uh, minimum emission standards uh, when the new rules are supposed to come in in 2025 or the new thresholds. So that's a big uh, unknown. And whether that can be done financially in a financially sensible way or not. So we, we are not out of the woods in terms of load shedding until we've added um, that new capacity and build to start replacing uh, the decommissioned coal fleet. So we know any of that yet. So yes, it's lovely to have this reprieve, but we really need as a country to see much more um, procurement activity 
and much more actual building activity and then the facilitatory decisions that are needed around see still no wheeling decision uh, the, the the issue around um, the grid connection uh, still remains a major problem for new projects so I think it's still some some way that South Africa has to go before we are really out of the load shedding woods thank you that's the second take show for this week thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis also don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter